When working from home and when making YouTube videos, I wanted a way to let my family members know that I was in a meeting or recording video. When I didn't find what I really wanted, I decided to make my own. In this video, I'll show you how I did it. I actually started the project by looking for an off-the-shelf solution. I found products that manually turn on, and I found some with remote controls. I really wanted the remote control functionality, but with more flexibility. The indicator is going to be outside my door, so I wanted to know when it's turned on, even when I can't see it. I also wanted some automation abilities, such as connecting it to like my meeting calendar to turn on automatically during meetings and things like that. As I'm apt to do, I quickly stopped searching existing projects and started down the path of making my own. I started working on a design. I would take an ESP8266, which is a small, inexpensive microcontroller that can do Wi-Fi, and have it listen to control commands from an NQTT server. On a light on command, it would turn the indicator light on. And of course, on a light off command, it would turn off the light. It would also report its connected status and the status of the indicator light to the MQTT server. This would give me both remote control and the light on off indication information that I'm looking for. First thing I needed was some sort of light that I could mount easily outside my door. After a bit of searching, I settled on some small, inexpensive circular under the cabinet lights. I knew I was going to modify them, and they were inexpensive enough to not worry about destroying. Plus, they were small and unobtrusive, which I liked. The next step was to figure out how they worked internally and what it would take to modify them. I took apart one light and inspected the circuitry. The first surprise was the capacitive touch sensor used to both turn on the light and control the dimming feature. I had hoped to just replace the switch with a GPIO for my own controller, but a capacitive switch and dimming logic made that more complicated. Continuing to poke at the circuitry, there was a charger controller for the rechargeable battery that was thankfully isolated from the other circuitry. Also, there was an unmarked controller chip that presumably handled the capacitive switch and the dimming logic. I found the output of this chip just drove a transistor that provided a ground signal to turn on the onboard LEDs. So I decided to dump the custom chip altogether and just drive this output line from my own controller. After removing the custom controller, I found the voltage in and the ground lines that went to it and tapped into those with my own wires. I did the same for the output line that drives the LEDs. With the control lines worked out, I wrote the firmware for the controller using MicroPython. It's pretty simple. It just connects to the network, then to MQTT, and it subscribes to the control messages. It also publishes two messages, one to say it's connected to MQTT and another for the light on off status. It sets what's called the last will message to be a disconnected status. That way, if the controller goes offline for whatever reason, the MQTT server will automatically publish the last will message. This lets me know remotely that the controller is not operating. At that point though, it was just a remote controlled light. It needs to obviously be an on-air indicator. So I took some letter stickers and added on air to the cover of the light. I won't discuss how much time I spent and how much re-lettering I did trying to get the letter straight. Eh, it's good enough. I intended to use the lettering as a mask, so I took the cover outside and I spray painted the whole thing red. When the paint was dry, I removed the stickers and ended up with a red indicator with frosted white lettering. Nice. The next dilemma was getting my controller inside the light casing. The controller was too deep to fit inside. I could have probably just removed the headers of the controller and crammed it in there, but instead I decided to just 3D print an extension. This gave me the means to make mounting points for the controller so it didn't rattle around in the case. It also gave me room to put in a regular sized toggle switch to turn the controller on and off. The mounting system for the light used a piece of metal that just sticks to the wall or cabinet with an adhesive and then a magnet on the back of the case just sticks to that so you can remove the light. I found this idea attractive and decided to stick with it for mounting. And with those buns, I've lost all five of my remaining views. Anyway, I removed the mounting magnet and super glued it to the back of my printed case extension. I also used the magnet technique to connect the case extension to the original case. I printed holders for some small rare earth magnets into the extension and hot glued the other magnets on the original case. With all the pieces in place, I made a hole for the wires and did some wire routing and stuck it all together. It was then time for a test. I have a good connection to MQTT. I can send the light on command and the light goes on. I send the light off command and the light goes off. Perfect. With all projects, you hit unexpected scenarios and gain experience that will help you in the next iteration of the project 
and or help you with decision making in the next project. I wanted to mention a few things I ran into in this project that may help you if you're doing something similar. First, when I was searching for the lights, they just happened to be rechargeable. It wasn't something I was necessarily looking for. I found that I can run the controller full time for about three days without the LEDs being on with this particular battery pack. Are we going to go full wireless mode? I could probably modify the firmware to put the controller in like sleep mode and periodically wake up and check the MQTT commands. This would cause a delay in the light coming on potentially, but would extend time between charges. In the end, I just ran a USB cable to the light. Also, the board has a red LED charging light. It's much dimmer than the on-air indicator, but it's a bit annoying when it does partially light up the indicator. I could remove that LED or just remove the battery and charging circuit altogether if I'm going to keep it wired. So these are just some considerations you may want to keep in mind if you build this yourself. If you build this or you have some suggestions for improvement or you build something similar, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.